Now, the thing about driving a motorhome is that you're piloting a much larger vehicle than your average family hatchback, for example. Um, a typical motorhome can be around three metres high, perhaps a little more, so you need to look out for height restrictions. Certainly any car parks with height limits or multi-storeys will be out of the question for your average motorhome owner. Width is an issue too on narrow lanes or anywhere with width restrictions, narrow bridges too. And town centres can require a little more care and attention. Always rely on your external mirrors. They really show your road positioning and help in manoeuvring the vehicle when often there is no centre mirror, although this particular vehicle does have both a centre mirror and a reversing camera. Reversing camera, of course, is a useful addition to any motorhome. When you're choosing your motorhome, it's very important to make sure that you've got enough seat belts. Some motorhomes only have the two seat belts in the cab. Now this one's actually got six, so it's a real family vehicle. But then you need to think about if you're gonna carry children, because some seat belts in motorhomes don't come out far enough to accommodate child seats for young children. Now, when you're traveling, of course, if you can, and you can in this vehicle, it's important to stow the table away. And this one's got a proper um, secure position for the table at the back of the vehicle. Of course, the other thing you need to do is make sure that everything else is stowed away. So don't leave your cups out. Make sure the lid's down on the hob. And most modern motorhomes have positive locking catches on the cupboards so they don't just fly out and if something falls against them. Same on these, they're positively secure. Remember the length of your motorhome too. This one's about seven meters, but the crucial thing is the wheelbase, the length between the two axles or even three axles if you're in a really large motorhome. Now, when you're cornering, you need to um, particularly at, say, T-junctions, you need to swing wide so that your back wheels aren't going to mount the kerb and cut the corner off. When parking, remember that your average coach-built motorhome won't fit into a normal parking space, whether that's a, a street parking space or in a, in a car park. Now, somewhere like uh, Sainsbury's or Tesco's, you will easily be able to park a vehicle like this normally, um, but you may need to take up more than one space. If you're parking in a pay and display car park, you may actually need to pay for more than one space, depending on how you can park. But also, if you're able to park so that the back of the vehicle is overhanging a verge, you may then be able to actually fit into one space. So it's important to look out for spaces that are more convenient for motorhomes. Driving a modern motorhome is easy. You've got power steering, you've got cruise control, cab air conditioning, all that sort of thing that you'd expect in a modern car. It's just a bit bigger, but if you use your mirrors, you use your reversing camera, and you use somebody at the back to help you, it's, it's really easy.